You know what? We're live. <laughs> we are live, people. Welcome to episode 34 of the weekly. And with me are our usual hosts, starting off with uh, Sam, who is clocking in and out, but there he is, aka Black Iron Underscore Man. How's it going, man? Hey, how are you, how you doing, everyone? All right, he has a new camera angle this week, followed up by the one and only Mr. Juan Carlos Bagnell. Hey guys, I'm sick as a dog, and so I'm gonna keep sucking on these cough drops and drinking a whole bunch of fluids and hopefully not share too much of my biology sounds with you fine folks out there. And finally, and hopefully you get uh, well soon though, but finally we have the one and only Freedom Fighter. Mm, I mean, freedom. sure, yes. AKA Warren Bowman from BW1.com. How's it going, man? I fight the, for the freedom from notches. That's right. Bombs. All right, let's get the show on the road. Samsung said, forget the notch, forget the dimple. It's all about the foldable displays. But before we get into that, I forgot to ask, does anybody have a uselessness for this week? I'm sure there's one. There's got to be one. Please tell me this one. Not, not it. <laughs> okay, well, so it's not a useless. Nothing, it's something nothing related. We we're all talking about PC rebuilds and stuff, and maybe going Team AMD instead of Team Intel. Have you guys been keeping up with the scores on the 9900K? No, I haven't. I haven't. So apparently, because this this CPU has had difficulty actually making it into consumers' hands, <laughs> like Intel doesn't have a lot going on. Um, that the thermals are kind of out of control. So if you really want all of this crazy horsepower at the price of this $1,000 chipset, then you've got a really hot PC. If you keep the thermals in check based on Intel spec, then it's performing within 1% or 5%, depending on benchmarks uh, and who's benchmarking it with uh, AMD's 2700X Ryzen. So uh, just, just an interesting little bit of Team Red, Team Blue, uh, the processor Ooh. battles continue, and um, it's uh, it's it's getting pretty crazy, you know. That is uh, that's not nineteen nineties all over again. It is. I mean, again, clock <laughs> speed versus core count versus optimizations, and then this is also going hand in hand with the fact that, like, by uh, what is it? We're going to see new tariffs in place uh, January first. Yeah. So those of you who are out there in the PC building community or by now. gaming community, yeah, really by this now. Black Friday is going to be real important because uh, components like power supplies, motherboards are are largely manufactured in China. So any products coming out of China might see anything from a 10 to 30 percent price bump, depending on the component. Um, RAM and, and storage prices should hopefully be leveling off and dropping. But uh, now would be a good time to look at what do you need to rebuild and what do you need to replace. And, uh, you know, this this November might be a good time to shop some sales. So you're saying that we should be very cognizant of where our uh, devices are being made. So besides just PC parts, I guess basically devices coming from China would be. An yeah, issue. A across the entire con the CE spectrum, all of the consumer electronics. Uh, uh, being sold throughout the world. Um, if your components are largely manufactured out of like South Korea, for example, or Taiwan, um, maybe you won't get hit as hard. Um, Chinese produced goods are, are probably going to see some some price increases. And we're already hearing from system uh, system manufacturers like Dell. That cost is, is essentially just going to be dumped directly back yeah. onto the computer as they import uh, consumer as they import parts. Okay, thanks for that fair warning there, um, Juan. Um, yeah, I'm building my PC next week, so <laughs> I'm so rebuilding next week too. <laughs> you guys are like a year late, but anyways, <laughs> I'm really not though. I'm 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 only nah. a behind. I, I I waited for my uh my twenty uh twenty nine seventy WX. So uh, I I'm I'm right on. Look at uh, you going baller at twenty nine seventy WX. Okay. I'm, I'm overbuying. <laughs> no, yeah. how, how often do you how often do you upgrade though? Because you sound like Never you're doing the three-year uh, build. No, my my uh, my current system is uh, an Intel fifty-eight twenty K. Yeah, come on. So yeah. twenty uh, twenty eleven V three uh, chipset, and I was gonna do another processor swap, but that that was not um, really a, a great a great. Uh, play so no, at, at some point you have to be like hey upgrade now spend the money and then basically don't have to upgrade for another three to five years 
that's what I'm hoping for. And that's why I'm overbuying now is really, I'm not looking for a speed system. I'm not looking for a Ferrari. I'm looking for like a big old fat diesel truck and something that will hopefully multitask well over the next five years. But, but it sounds like you've got a diesel powered Ferrari. <laughs> well, no, the 2970 isn't really a With fast a heavy. It, With in, a heavy. In, in a lot of software benchmarks, it's outperformed by the 2950. It's it's when you're looking at one task at a time, this this is actually not the wiser purchase. What I'm hoping to do, though, and my experiment. So I'm going to be doing some videos on this is I want to be able to render 4K video at 60 frames per second with a 100 megabit per second bit rate and still be able to fire up you know, like Photoshop or GIMP and work on thumbnails and have Word open and write a script. Right now, it takes me around three to four hours to render a 30 minute camera review. And if I touch my mouse, there's a very good chance that that review is gonna gonna bork. <laughs> so my computer is down for three to four hours to knock out one of Me. those really, really high quality uh, camera reviews. So that, that's the test. And you're doing 64 gigs of RAM, right? And I have, and I did. I already have 64 gigs of uh, 3200 speed RAM. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Did you make? The, I think the 2950, uh, 29, 20, ugh, the WX series. Are they ranked at 266 or 3200 uh, in terms of their front side bus? No, the, it's it's. Uh, I believe they're 266, and again, okay. I overbought there too. So I, I so, can still uh, tap into an XMP memory profile, but again, I I wanted something that was over spec, because I'm looking at system reliability, and I'm looking to make sure that nothing is near its its uh, upper limits. I will say from my own experience, because I've been on the AMD platform since last year, um, actually probably a year ago since now. Because um, you went from a 1950 to a 2950, right? Yeah, and it was literally just a process of drop in. That so I, just had to make, I just I just had to make sure the BIOS was updated. Beyond that, drop in, and it was good to go from there. Um, the one thing I will say is that one of the reasons I did switch to 2950s is I'm allowed now to use my RAM at the full speed that I bought it because I have 3200 RAM. Mm -hmm. When I had a DDR, uh, when the RAM supported your 266 on 1950X, and I believe that's on a WX platform. Try to overclock to it; it can be very a struggle. I think the map I got it too, because it really depends on the silicon and the chips. That if you lucked out, you might be able to get or overclock to that if you have the right setting. But for me, I, I think I was able to get it to about the uh, thirty sixty six is the fastest that I can okay. get to without without having some type of uh, issues in terms of like um, and, and honestly. Up. And, and honestly, I'm okay running things slower than those those parts are actually rated for. Um, the, I'm, actually, the reason why I went 32 instead of 3,000 was just because it was the same price. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I might as well get the slightly faster RAM if it's going to end up caught being within a dollar of uh, the slower RAM. But, but again, my big experiment is to see I am okay losing an individual benchmark. Because again, 2950, because of the way that AMD is doing these multiple cores and the fact that the 2970 has the same thermals and the same power draw as the 2990. Um, I'm okay losing an individual battle or an individual benchmark if this system really can keep me productive while it's cranking on some really high quality video. So that that's the big hope. That that's something that that I'm in desperate need of an upgrade now. As I built this workstation, thinking I'd be cool with 1080p video and maybe 1080p video at 60 frames per second. Ooh, <laughs> how powerful! Um, now I'm trying to use it to to cut substantially bigger video projects and substantially weightier uh, bit rates. And it's just not keeping pace. And, and that's where things need to change. I, I would definitely advise anyone that's building an AMD, especially a third person system, that it loves fast RAM. It, the, the faster your RAM is, the better performance you're going to see out of your system and really take advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, we do have a show that needs to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's just kick it on, guys. What do you mean? Okay. The show has started. What are you complaining about? What are you talking I, about? I feel like this is tech relevant right now. It's tech, <laughs> all right, all right. It is tech relevant. And I think 
it, it would be nice to get more and into overclocking and stuff, but yeah, this show is good. <laughs> All right, let's let's kick it off with what Samsung showed off this week. They announced their foldable display to a mixed reaction from the tech crowd, I would say, at least from my survey on, on Twitter. Um, so I want to get everyone's thoughts because Samsung showcased this display. It was in a shell, so you don't see the proper design. They did state that it will go into production early next year, so we should expect to see it sometime. Uh, next year, uh, the display folds out to a seven inch uh, tablet, if you will. Um, it's got a front display as well. And then also runs Samsung's new One UI, which maximizes uh, finger location. I would call it that because you don't have to stretch to the top or be like an iOS user. We have to go to that back button on the very top mm -hmm. of the device. So they, they actually talked about things like that with that. But what are your thoughts? Because, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave my own thoughts to the end, but I want to get everyone's thoughts on that. I'll start off with you, Warren. What do you think about the foldable display? Um, it's cool tech. I, I like to see that somebody's finally putting this out here. It's, it, it, to me, it's going to be what device and how it comes out and its usability. Like, I, I'm glad they announced it, but I'm more excited to say I want to see the device, I want to see the UI, and I want to see it in practical use on a device that they're planning to sell to retail, sell to customers and expect them. This is how we expect you to use this device with a foldable display. And this is what is going to benefit you from it. Benefits are from it. Now, I'm not surprised by a lukewarm reaction from the tech community because it doesn't have an Apple logo on it. If it had an Apple logo on it, they'd act like this thing is like they act like this thing is the next coming. They act like they reinvented the wheel. I'm just saying it's just the honest truth. It's just Samsung puts out something really, really cool, pushes innovative in tech, and then we get this sort of lukewarm reaction. Let me remind you, we've been through this space before. It's called the Galaxy Note. They had the same lukewarm reaction, and all those pundits got, got it shoved in their face when the Note 9 essentially changed the game on all big screen phones and on screens on phones in general. So I'm seeing Samsung probably doing the same thing again here with these curved displays, going through and changing the game once again with this. We'll hear the lukewarm reactions from the tech pundits because it doesn't have an Apple logo on it. And eventually I could see this coming out in a way where we're going to get some different unique devices on on smartphones and on tablets and on some other things as well too. I don't think it's just restricted to that. We could see a lot of smart home devices possibly take advantage of these ways as well to do to, uh, as well too to do different things. But um, really uh, I'm just I'm I'm more happy. I'm glad that the tech is out, and I'm glad that we could see it and it's real. We've known it for a while, but like here, where we're actually doing it, and this is like the first cool new thing we've had in a while, and I'm really excited to see where it goes once they get a real device out there. Okay, Juan, how about you? Uh, Warren brings up a bunch of great points because I think it, it definitely goes hand in hand with something that we've been saying on this podcast for a while. If you're first, you're punished. Um, and so Samsung actually isn't first to this notion of multi or bendy or combined screens. I mean, the Axon M was sort of an, an evolutionary missing link to making more screens on your device, creating a functional space out of that. Um, I'm really curious to see because I, I feel if any company is going to do this well for a first gen product, it's going to be Samsung. I'm still not convinced that my, my lukewarmness doesn't, ha I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not overly concerned with whether or not there's an, uh, what logos on there. Um, my lukewarmness is we need to see the implementation. We need to see how the phone responds to utilizing this workspace. If the operating system is smart enough to keep up with it. Google's already said, well, we're going to start supporting foldables. We we understand that foldables are going to be a, a market segment in the future, but that also sort of speaks to the fact that the current software that we use is kind of too dumb to understand when screen sizes, aspect ratios, and resolutions change. Yeah. And that's that's the big stumbling block on a phone like the Axon M, is you open the screens and it's like, well, we can mirror it. Right? That's cool, but how often do I really need a mirrored display i want more workspace i have to manually tell the phone oh by the way you just got twice as much screen real estate let me use it no well, i'm just, sure samsung can address that but it's also it, it kind of does speak to where tablets were originally it's it's sort of a solution in search of a problem and it doesn't really address some of the concerns that we've had with phones i'm way more 
excited about Samsung taking a stab at cleaning up UI, better theming, um, better uh, better manipulation of data. You know, those types of things I'm way more excited to see on a traditional phone. And I hope that that gets pulled over from this foldable phone experiment, because those are the things that I think actually benefit all end users. Um, the tech exciting hardware experiment is cool and it's going to get headlines and it's going to look neat in videos. But the actual on the ground daily improvements and daily interactions, that's where I'm actually excited to see Samsung going. Uh, uh, I, and I wanted to add one more thing that I even meant to add before that I didn't interrupt, but it's like when we're talking about OSs, I'd really like to see this would make me excited if if Microsoft with Windows 10 and how it's probably more more on that adaptability in terms of what display it's on, you know, really take advantage of this in some particular way and and maybe find a funky different way to create a surface. God, don't get back into the phone business because you guys are terrible at that. Don't even look at a phone. Um, but any other device, I think it'd be pretty cool to see them take advantage and it already and with Windows 10 already being out there and the idea of it being this being that it can adapt to multiple different displays as long as it's not true 4k <laughs> but, um, I, I really think it would I think I think it'd be really cool to see them to see that happen uh, Sam all right so everyone actually makes some really amazing um, amazingly good points um, the usability for the foldable display I'm not too sure it's the best thing to call it a foldable phone it's more of a foldable tablet. Um, but eh, phone, tablet, it's it's up to Samsung, whatever it wants to call it as a device. But I do think there's a use for this. Um, <clears throat> there is a market segment for people who basically want that seven inch um, tablet, which is to me missing. perfect. What? It's missing right now. Yeah, it yeah, really is. It's the perfect form factor for a tablet. Yeah. And the last one that was out there was actually a Nexus device. And that's actually the Nexus tablets are done. <clears throat> well, actually, it's out there. We just don't think of we just think of them as tablets like that. So, and so basically, having a, a a tablet that can actually fold into a phone kind of kills two birds with one stone. I can see this being useful when it gets to the point where it's thin enough for you to be able to use it as a as your regular phone, and also foldable, where you can basically open it up and read an article instead of looking at a, reading an article on a smaller uh, on a smaller screen. You can basically read it on a, 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 a in a tablet format and get more real estate out of that video if you're basically traveling. Traveling. Instead of watching on a smaller screen, you unfold it. Wow, you can see a uh, bigger video. There is a use case for it, but it'll be it's not gonna be basically first generation or maybe even second generation, it might be the third iteration of this phone slash tablet that people begin saying, Oh wow, this is actually pretty cool. And the fact that we have a foldable display on something like a phone that people use so much right now, can you imagine this being a foldable armband? a foldable like you know wallets something where you can you, you can now get screens into places you might not normally think of getting screens into and that's what excites me the most about this well where and just imagine your field of view on something like a vr headset when you can actually sculpt that with with the appropriate lenses as opposed yeah. to just like two flat panels that are sort of then yeah. warped by lenses yeah. you could actually create something more immersive that way yeah, or even current use right now. You know how you have to change the distance between the lenses? You can literally now change the shape of the lenses. That's kind of cool if, they, if we can get to that point. Um, but yeah, I, but I think the big news is really going to be just more usability from the UI side of things. Um, having UI that makes it easier for the consumers to basically get into, clean it up. I really feel bad for Microsoft because people are coming out with this dark mode now and Microsoft kind of started that shit, but, <laughs> <laughs> but where are they right now? So it, it's nice to see that other, other, other phones are adapting to things that make it easier for people to read and also you know, um, less of an impact on battery life. It's been a long time coming. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the, the easier it is for you to use the device, the, the, the easier it is for you to unify the experience across all your devices, the better the experience is gonna be for, for, for the user. And I think that's probably gonna be the most usable impact from the announcement. Yeah, and I mean, we've got two great comments here from Aditya and Nil. Um, one thing I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on, the bigger issue is the repair factor. 
You know, you're having so many, so much uh, Samsung proprietary tech. Samsung is going to be the only outlet, maybe LG techs too. But like, you know, would you be able to get something like this repaired without, you know, having to jump through a bunch of hoops? Is this going to be oh, yeah. more disposable? And then to your point there too, Sam, we have iMac tech, a device with this kind of functionality. We've seen uh, Samsung pushing with stuff like Dex. Like you can make an argument for a mini foldable tablet being your primary travel computer. Um, if this is your main device, handling communication, social media, media consumption, what about the battery? We've got three screens on this device, but it's yeah. it folds up to the size of a phone. How do we guarantee that you can actually utilize all of that tech yeah. and not be you know like attached to a, an external battery or to a charger all the time? Carry a think... car battery with you all over the place. <laughs> Right, I mean, a car battery. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be interesting though uh, when it comes to battery life for that kind of stuff. We'll see. I mean, you know, we'll see what they do with flexible batteries for that, and what size batteries they're going to put, and if some of this tech is actually depends on you know because they're not using glass anymore. They stated that when they were they, they're using a different type of polymer on there. Um, they said it makes it thinner and lighter for more space. So we'll have to see what all that pans out. So I think that's something that it's a wait and see. And probably in three years is where we probably get better battery life anyway from these things. But um, I, th I think for me, I just like the fact that a 70 inch tablet is back. Like literally, I forget everything else. It was just when he opened it up, I was like, that's a Nexus tablet. That's an Android 70 inch tablet. And that's probably what will save tablets in Android as a whole. Because tablets are dead in Android. We know that, right? It's, well, outside of Amazon's Kindle, which they yeah. have a seven-inch model, though. Yeah, yeah but it, it's not considered an Android tablet. Nobody considers Even people who buy it don't they consider do it people, do, people, do people consider Samsung devices Android tablets when they buy it? It's not like Google sits back and advertises Android tablets. No, but I'm saying, but at least a Samsung will call it, they still call it an Android tablet. I'm just saying that from them. The idea that, you know, there'll be two people who can do this easily. Uh, LG already stated they will have a portable display showcased at CES. So LG is in the market for this. So they, at least they will be either making it or selling it themselves. And Samsung has showcased this. And we have that ability. I think what Samsung showcases, what they did with the Galaxy Note, as much as the reaction is lukewarm, it's the same reaction of the Galaxy Note. It reminded me exactly of that because mm -hmm. Samsung said then, then yeah. we have a device that people want because especially in markets outside of the US, you cannot afford to buy a tablet and a phone. That's why the Note came about. Mm -hmm. Now, this truly is the successor to the Note in my mind because it literally gives you that real estate for, you mentioned Dex, for productivity. You slide in a pen in there somewhere as well, you know, on, you know, on one side. Uh, if you can introduce a kickstand somehow as well. I mean, there's so much you can do with this device that says, this is my portable computing. And going back to who was talking about Microsoft um, and the fact that if, you know, I think Warren, you talk about Windows on here. Windows, you know, this is Microsoft's always connected device. If they were smart, this is the next always connected device. It's a, it's not a phone. It's not a PC. It's your device that's always connected. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities here from what Samsung showed off with this display that I think um, it mean, it's making all my Westworld dreams come true in my mind because I've got that device that I think granted Westworld opens up like 10 times over, but um, you know, that to me, I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they use it. Plus, as you were stating, uh, Sam, the fact that it's foldable now, maybe VR becomes a much more exciting space. Uh, where you have displays that fit people's faces properly, um, and you can get you know the, you know resolutions that you want. You can get it in smaller form factors. You can even have it for different uh, devices around you know the home. Um, you know, like we looked at uh, the the Google uh, Home Hub can look more stylish now with a foldable display to end it. You know, you know you can have it a, as a tent pole or something. So I think there are a lot of benefits to this that I think. For me, a lot of techies didn't look past the fact that it was a phone that full opens up. I mean, and that, that was my problem with a lot of people is that mm -hmm. they, they couldn't just see the fact that, hey, look, it's a, remember, it's a display demo, really just, just because they ran their OS on there. 
doesn't yeah, mean that it, they can't do more. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with the, with, with, with the reception of it because we all agree, and everyone who looked at it all agreed that this is pretty cool tech. And then they go, well, don't get it. No, no one's asking you to buy this right now. They, you can't buy this right now. So what's the point of saying, don't buy it? If you like the tech, you want to go, oh, wow, I'm really interested to see what Samsung really, you know, what the argument is for, for a product like this from Samsung. I'm looking forward to see an actual production device from Samsung. But it goes, oh, cool concept, but why do we need it? <laughs> like, really? I mean, yeah, it's, like, it's, is that it, where we're at right now? It's, it's quite it evident with MKB, MKBHD's video where he starts off, but why now? And, you know, I honestly didn't finish watching the video because I, as a techie, got offended. Yeah. Not because he was, uh, there's nothing wrong with his statement, but it was, it was like saying, but why <laughs> don't we have innovation? Why don't we try something new? Yeah, it's getting it's getting really frustrating listening to people crying for like, well, we need something new, we need something fresh, we need something exciting. But then when it comes to our actual videos and reviews, we're going to tell you not to buy something unless it's exactly the thing that you've always used and totally understand 100% and it's just got a faster processor. And and that's that's getting really tiresome. That's getting really dull. I mean, we yeah. keep, keep giving into that. And, and when we have an expectation that consumers should never have to change their behavior, that's another thing I'm getting real tired of is like, I, I, you know, I was in the middle of another uh, of another live stream and a podcast and they're like, oh, well, you know, why why uh, why use these apps? Or, you know, if someone's learned how to do video editing on one platform, you know, like, well, but you can also do it over here and you can do that. Oh, but who's going to relearn? Who's going to learn how to do that? Yeah, well, they had to learn how to use the apps on one platform. You're telling me they can't figure out how to change if they're going to make a swap or they're going to change right. ecosystems. If, and if and it sort of entrenched them. this lowest common denominator mouth breather idea of the average consumer. And I, yeah. I, 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 I can't handle that anymore. We need to take some risks occasionally. And I seriously doubt that this is going to be a disastrous risk for someone who's looking for something innovative and looking for something fresh if you're, if you're you know like a grandparent who wants like the most streamlined experience well yeah i'm probably not going to recommend a folding phone to my grandmother for her next device but but that's that's because there's a huge spectrum of difference between her as an end user and all of the other people out there shopping technology yeah. yeah, and I think this is going to be for the person really. The, the people who are initially going to get these are the, are the people in your family who are the ones who really start that conversation about technology. They're the ones who are going to have the first phones with the fingerprint scanner under the, the screen. It's, they're the ones who probably bought the first flagship um, notes or Note 9s or whatever. They're the ones who basically come to, uh, come home during Christmas when everyone's talking about how cool the Apple or how cool the other devices are. And you're like, oh, I, can, you, can, can it do this? And people are like, oh, maybe that's something I want on my next phone. Maybe that's something I should be looking for for next time. It's just they're the ones who are going to start that conversation. It's not everyone that should buy something like this or should be into something like this. It's for the people who really want to be on that bleeding edge. Yeah, I know. Uh, it, it is true. And I hope, I mean, I'm glad Samsung is taking these kind of risks because at least it shows that they know that, okay, there are certain things they have to do as a, as a manufacturer, as a brand um, to put themselves out there. Um, and just to move to the other topic, you know, they showcase their new infinity displays for next year and Samsung show, and a lot of people are like, well, Samsung is going to have a notch and yeah, they will, but that's all going to be on their budget devices. They showcased four displays, the Infinity V with a V-style notch, which is basically a small dimple V. There's the Infinity U with a new U-size notch. And then there's the Infinity O with an O notch in the corner somewhere. And then they showcased the Infinity display. No notch, thin bezels or no bezels or whatever it is. <laughs> and, and I go, yeah, that's the Galaxy S10 display right there on the far right. And uh, just your thought process on the fact that, okay, Samsung has accepted that there will be some notches on some of the devices, and also they will also have a device with no notch, just general. Uh, Warren, what do you think? Uh, it's just, you know, they're a display company. They sell displays, so it makes sense that they would make notch displays to sell to all the companies that want to put notches on their phones. Uh, and not and only that, but probably offer some notches on their own devices as well, too as they see fit. So it, to me, it's a smart play to, for them to um, 
to make a bunch to essentially get into this, make some money off of it, while still not having to do that on their main flagship phones. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, Sam? A notch is a notch is a notch. It doesn't matter if Apple does it. doesn't matter if LG does it. doesn't matter if Samsung does it. It's an ugly, lazy way to basically get the Infinity Display. I, I think Samsung is just being lazy. I think they're... We've wait, seen, wait, 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 wait. They've, wait, got, wait, they've wait. got one we've without seen, a notch. We've seen, we've seen already this year. Good. They have one without a notch. That's amazing. Great. But we've seen already this year that other manufacturers have been able to use different kind of implementations of slide phones, of a slide kind of like um, of, of, of a slide mo uh, mo a module or whatever you want to call it that basically, you know, hides the camera and you use, you know, the um, you, you can basically slide it out and use the camera. What's it? The, the mix, the mix three. Yeah, I can't say do something like that. It's like innovate on the phone. You just carve a notch. No, no, but remember, this is this infinity V, infinity U. Be, be, it's before, lazy. Before it's you easy. get, before you get angry, this is still just displays. It has nothing to do with no, with exactly. mechanisms. Yeah, no, no, so. I get that. But this is basically saying that you need to have the camera in front of the phone. That's what they're saying right now. That you don't need to innovate in any way. Just put the camera where the camera always is, and slap the screen and cut out the notch. It's lazy. I, 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 I agree with Sam because I feel like there's there's something that Samsung could be doing as a brand to tie their mid rangers with their high end phones with this new experimental folding phone. Samsung could be the company of multiple displays. I I don't think I, I to, so not not to like fight you, Sam. I I don't necessarily think that Samsung should give us sliders. Um, that's not really ever been a part of their manufacturing style outside of like what was it the epic on sprint the the galaxy galaxy s1 that was a long time ago <laughs> I mean, that, that's I, yeah. one of the only i think slider parts or movable parts that they've ever made like that um but but you could create an entire brand image around you know our super high-end phone unfolds so you have you know multiple screens our mid-rangers have a screen on the back. So why would you ever want to take your selfies with the inferior camera? We're giving you a second display. Because the back of your phone is going to be made out of glass anyway. You might as well be able to use it for something. And now, look, you can take your selfies from the best possible set of cameras that we can do. And this would just go hand in hand with their initiative in delivering more of their bleeding edge tech, some of their multiple camera experiments to their mid-ranger phones. You know, continue that pressure, make the mid rangers sexier and sexier and sexier, and then bam, at the high end, we've got radical new unfolding origami designs. That I think would would do well to speak across the entire gadget spectrum. You would brand Samsung as being that multiple screen, multiple use kind of company. I think that would go a lot farther than like, oh, look at this infinity display, except for where the notch totally molests your screen that, that's old <laughs> that's tired and, it, and like to sam's point i think that's lazy i think that shows a lack of of innovative uh design thought i i don't think it's lazy i think oh, no it's lazy no, i mean the notches and, and are lazy no 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 the notches the notches that, are lazy anyone the delivering a notch in 2019 is lazy yeah. the difference here is this and i know what the reason why samsung made those three is one simple thing they lost out a lot of money to lg this year that's why. That's the only reason. Because, because to me, it seems like they went. If you look at if you look at the display itself, they're all the same. And they went, let's drill a hole here, let's drill a hole here, and let's drill a hole there, so we can sell it and make more money down the line. Yeah, I, that, that, that's what I'm I agree. It's design not a wise, issue. Is it's not a, exactly. It's not a screen issue. It's a design issue. Yeah, you can yeah. innovate your way around that, but you just decided, eh. It's, made nice, but, it's just it's a money issue. That's what it is. That's the true issue here. Is they nah, lost out. They I lost like out. A, no, no. I'm I'm just I'm just saying. No, no, that no, I, 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 I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But I'm I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I don't like a notch on the Google Pixel. I don't like a notch. Oh, that's on, not a notch. That is oh, yeah. that's a bastardization. I, I don't like a notch a on the iPhone, and I still don't like a notch on any on these screens. I just don't. Even yeah. that notch is a, is a little much for me. It looks like someone's basically having a what's the name count chocula phone. Has a little divot in the head. Come on, <laughs> count chocula. Oh my god! Because <laughs> like, like you know the widow's peak on like the yeah, widow's sixteen. You know, yeah. like it, it. It's still okay. So I gotta say it's it's funny. <clears throat> 
um th this is this is still in the way so like you full screen a game and it's still in on the screen but it is shocking how much better android has handled the notch than ios i was firing up uh arc you know that dinosaur survival game yeah. and there are menus that are obstructed on the iphone and there's no way to tell the iPhone, like, stop doing that or rein in the resolution or pull in the sides or anything like that. And at least Android, you can go like, hey, stop it and pinch it out and like kind of hide it a little bit. See, it doesn't take away from all that good anime action right there. Oh, stop <laughs> it. That, that's oh. it right there. That's it right there. You're, See, you're actually see? helping prove my point. About I know, I know. <laughs> you know what would be actually cool, though? I don't know. I'm just like, <laughs> what would be actually cool is if putting your hands over the camera actually activated a UI while you were in full screen mode. Then I'd be like, oh, that's a useful feature. But no, they don't want to innovate. They just want to be lazy. So just carve a nut, put a camera. I, I really, I like, for, what was it? Not, was it last week we were talking about that other phone that had the dual screen? Yeah, like the more I think about yeah. it, the more I really wish we could get to the Nubia X. Yeah. I mean, I just keep thinking, like, how awesome would it be if I could flip over my V40 and not have those somewhat mediocre selfie shooters on the front, but have great uh, composition guidelines, a, a, a screen showing me how I could line up the shot with the really awesome cameras on Please, the back stop of that. watching phone. anime. No, I was, just, I was just trying to show you the difference here. <laughs> This is now the, this is the um, Huawei. Oh, he missed part of his hand for that punch. <laughs> I'm just saying, though. I'm just saying. Yeah, but it's distracting me because it's, uh, yeah, no, it is distracting. I do agree. I mean, And now a copyright claim. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, because I do that all the time in my videos. Like, instead of showing, like, the actual, like, I know, I'll play the video on a phone and shoot video of the phone playing the video. video. Ah, <laughs> because that, that copy, right? representation or a re-representation of what's going on with voice right. rather than so, just a straight on. <laughs> as long as I don't play there the audio, so far there I've been fine. Knock on wood. Um, all right, let's, let's move on. The iPad Pro finally launched. Apple's claim for this thing to be a laptop replacement uh, is something that they stated quite well as more as powerful as the Xbox uh, One S in terms of performance. Um, and I want to get your thoughts. I know I I know I don't have one. I've seen other people's videos. I also would suggest people should go check out um, Matthew Moniz did a live stream yesterday where he got as many accessories out, and he's like, "All right, guys, let's see if we can make this a." Uh, a laptop replacement and there was a lot of failure going on there's a lot of failure going on um in that whole idea of replacing your laptop and what i've gathered at least from the ipad pro is that yes it's got the fastest mobile processor out there this thing is a performance beast on a mobile platform but it's still an ipad it's still a tablet so i just want to get your thoughts on it uh, i'll start off with you juan what do you think I'm sorry, did you say Juan or Warren? I, my ears are so Juan. Sorry. Um, no, that wasn't on you. That I'm literally saying, like, I'm, I'm getting about 70% of everything you guys are saying because I'm super congested. Um, no, it, this is this is hearkening back to while I was still at Pocket Now when we reviewed the smaller, the first generation iPad Pro. And my big task, the thing I wanted to try and accomplish during that review was, could I produce a video? Because that's my work. That's my profession. It's a pro product. This is how I'm going to interact with a pro product for my profession. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't get to that last finished completed video. Years later, I've been able to do that much more effectively on Android without completely changing my workflow. The way that I go about shooting, organizing my files, recording audio and assembling a video is easier to accomplish on Android. And a lot of that doesn't even really have to do with the specific video editing app. It has to do with the whole periphery of how we get work done. I'm shooting from several different phones and several different cameras and recording audio from different platforms and, and creating images on, on different screens from computers to phones to tablets. Uh, when I assemble all of that content, it's the little things like the little quirks of file management. If I want to be able to do that well on an iPhone, I have to work in a very specific way that Apple has crafted that experience. And I can't really deviate. 
So if I didn't organize things just right, I might get stuck and be in a place where I can't finish my work. And on Android, I have that little bit of extra flexibility, even though some of the tools aren't quite as nice as they are in iOS land. When we get to this current iPad Pro and the argument that they're making that it can replace a laptop, I find that that argument can be true for a number of the services that have improved substantially in mobile apps. But kind of like some of my criticisms for the foldable phone, the iPad still somewhat represents a solution in search of a problem. And you can't know if it's going to be able to get your work done until you take one for a spin. And that's a lot of money to dedicate towards an experiment, which may or may not succeed. But then after you've spent all that money, a lot of people are apt to keep it and then change their behavior to try and solve that problem as opposed to saying, oh, you know what? This actually doesn't do what I need it to do in the way that I want to do it. Let me return it and go and get a MacBook instead. You know, that that's always been where I've never understood how Apple gets to keep the reputation that they do. Because when we talk about having to change our behavior in Android land, well, that's a fail. Oh, you had to relearn something? You have to do something different? That's a fail. But Apple just charges you up front for that. <laughs> Here's your Apple product. Change everything about the way that you've been doing business and do it our way. And then you're going to be so much happier. And, and that to me has always been sort of the disingenuous comparison between those two products. I mean, those two platforms. Um, this is a huge opportunity that I think Microsoft is missing out on. I feel like they should be more competitive here. And it's on them that they're not. But in the in the meantime, I know a lot of people in my circles of family and friends who will probably take the plunge on going iPad as primary computer because of these claims. And uh, some of them will be very successful with that. And I think some of them will be frustrated by it, but will probably still continue to use the iPad as if it could be some kind of laptop replacement. Oh, yeah. Um, just just quickly, just before you jump in, it just reminded me of um, my uncle. Uh, um, he had a coworker who told him the iPad could replace what they did at work. And he called me up. He said I should come to the house, came over, and he was very disappointed that he could not do work on his iPad. I, I actually laughed at my uncle for the first time in my life because <laughs> – so I had him, had him over my first Surface, the first Surface, uh, Surface 1. And he was like, wow, I can actually do all my work here. I'm like, this yeah. is a computer. This is toy. There you I go. mean, because it's not to say that, you know, like, this has been the frustration. I was uh, I was actually just on this morning in the Surface subreddits. And like, there are so many things that we want from the iPad. We just don't want to sacrifice full x86 compatibility. You know, I, I, stop trying to make this an artificial line in the sand between a mobile app like interface and your full Windows desktop experience. If, or if I'm on a surface, I want better text scaling. I want better rotation. I want smoother uh, transitions and animations like Microsoft could be delivering this, but it seems like they're focused on creating that artificial barrier between x86 compatibility, legacy software, and then like, oh, but here's here's like a. Uh, Here's like Windows Go. <laughs> no, it can only play, you use like Windows Universal apps. Like that's a false argument. That's a false dichotomy. We should be able to do both and have a, a cleaner, smoother, more fluid, prettier experience, even when we're using Windows legacy software. Uh, Sam, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I agree with most of the things you said, Juan. And I think there's actually something that you, if you went a little further, you would have actually pointed out that this is, it, it, we're seeing two companies. Two titans basically approach the same thing from different from different ends. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is dumbing down a product which is pretty damn good, and Apple is trying to basically bulk up the products. Yeah, to bring it to the PC <laughs> world. So it's like, what is Microsoft doing at this point? I think Microsoft really, really needs to you know to take um, basically take a step back and say, oh, people really want a device like this. Can we make the surface thinner? Can we make the surface something that would give you that would look a lot more stylish and still give you surface? That's what well, I'm talking also, about. Because I mean, look at look at what is a what's the cheaper surface right now? Surface Go. The Surface Go. You know, they're they they played ball with certain hardware partners and certain manufacturers to make the surface go when they didn't really pick the best tools that they could have at the same time that they've got you know other manufacturers like qualcomm is making some some surprisingly oh, good oh. arguments for no but think about it no no no, no I, meant in, I meant in a good way trust me i oh I, yeah yeah, I yeah. but i'm saying windows on arm and microsoft is putting that effort towards making windows 
run better on mobile chipset, mobile hardware. And then they don't, they don't show that with any confidence. You know, where, where's the Microsoft branded product that Microsoft is saying, we believe in this initiative and we're going to provide you a solution to take advantage of it. And then they're absent from that with a product that would have been perfect for that segment, the, the Surface Go. So again, it's, it's Microsoft sort of halfway accomplishing something. You, you've got your Surface Book. That's a beautiful laptop. You've got your Surface Pro. I mean, they're there, but then they don't fully commit. They don't really keep putting the pressure on they kind of dabble and then they get distracted and do something else and then they go oh well so much of our money is server side anyway maybe we'll just work on services it, again it, it's very interesting how they dabble and what they do i mean i, I just got um the razor blade 15 right their new base model which is fifteen hundred dollars it now has a it's it doesn't have a 4k display it's, it's a 1080p display um, performance wise and what you get from that beats out the, uh, the surface book Two minus the display. And you, you know, you get a full ethernet, you get USB type C, you get Thunderbolt, you've get, you got two USB, uh, a ports as well. You've got a terabyte of hard drive. You can open it up, put in your own one terabyte, um, MVME, and it's still cheaper because it's only a hundred and something bucks in there and you're mm. going, okay, I get it, Microsoft, fine. You want to do a buffer where your OEM partners can make money underneath you, but fine. If you're going to price these devices that high, like you're going to spec it on, if you're going to price it that high, then spec it out, right? Just make it look like it's, it's, you know, Jesus came and blessed this, this <laughs> laptop for me. And I'm going like, you know what? Jesus blessed it. It's cool. You know, I'm good with that, but not, not do this thing where I'm like, I want to buy a Surface laptop too. It's a really good device. And I'm still going like, hmm, but why didn't you just add Thunderbolt? Like, or like, you know, the, you know, why didn't you just do that? Why didn't you just have a model with a dedicated uh, um, GPU, you know, just for people who want that? Yeah. Or why don't you just refresh the device, the, the, the design, when you actually put out a refresh? <laughs> you know, they've kept the design the same for almost six, the last six years running. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's like, I remember the first time I saw, um, the, what was it? The, uh, surface two. What did three. I tell you? Like, three. Oh, the three. Yeah. What yeah. did I tell you? It needs to have smaller bezels. If you can give me this thing with smaller bezels and thinner, it's a winner. And they just haven't changed. Instead. You know, I'll, I'll be curious to see how that plays out. Um, the, cause I've, I've only handled the new iPad pro. I, I haven't really used it for anything. Um, I don't like the smaller bezels. I don't like the bezel that's smaller than than the side width of my thumb. Um, yeah, but doesn't on the phone, the yeah. Line. But on the laptop, no. though. No, but that's just it. Is is what we're talking for a surface, yeah. right? Like, I, I I start to get concerned again about the usability and the practicality of that device being somewhat interrupted by the sexiness of the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. That 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 doesn't necessarily the sexier aesthetic doesn't necessarily mean that it's better design. Um, I, I have those concerns. I'm not saying that a company can't pull it off and give me way better palm and thumb rejection and edge rejection. Like you could, you could solve that problem. I just don't know that I have any confidence in their current manufacturers yeah. to solve that problem right now. I mean, I, I will say the iPad has done it well. Oh, it's, it's, it's I'm even, but even when I hold tablets, I never put my finger on the screen. I do, I have got big hands, so I grab and then my other hand just hooks on the side. But the iPad has done it well where you're not going to, unless you've got super fat fingers, and then it rolls over into the screen. So I kind of do, though. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Um, but but that's kind of the, but to Sam's point, that's that's exactly where you know, like I, I'm not necessarily too concerned with Microsoft's aesthetic needing a lot of sprucing up, but they're missing these huge opportunities to actually target their uh, their their audience. Yeah. Um, I will not buy a Surface until I have Thunderbolt three. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. And you've got so many players in the space doing really innovative stuff. Why not have surface compatibility for external GPUs and really modern workspaces that can utilize yeah. Thunderbolt and USB three, USB C, and and that's where I'm very concerned about Microsoft's lack of focus, lack of direction, because the Surface was way more successful than the Lumia line of Windows phones ever was, but we're seeing them play the same game. 
just as they're starting to get traction in one area, they sort of sit back for a couple years. Well, that's not how you drive, you know, your market share. That's not how you appeal to consumers. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts, Warren? I know we've been just kind of yeah. Sorry, I got, I got <laughs> going back and forth here. But any thoughts? Um, I the thing is, is that I don't. I don't think Microsoft, like people are looking at us like, well, why is Microsoft competing? Well, look at the price of the iPad Pro that they're trying to sell this against the Surface. Once they become very close within a similar price, people, there, there's a lot of people that might go, well, why don't I just get it myself a full computing device? And I've already heard that at my full time job with a couple of other people we're talking about off what we're going to offer to users. And we'll look at the iPad Pro and we're looking at the price and we're like, all right, this versus. The surface here, which is which is going to give us honestly more functionality out of it than what the iPad Pro is going to do for now, essentially to almost nearly the same price and with far less dongles than you're going to need to be able to actually get things going and a headphone jack and 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 all, all other things that you get with a surface. I look at this iPad Pro as remember Microsoft did all those commercials against the iPad. And about all these other things that the iPad couldn't do. Yeah, the that thing was like a Surface Four. Yeah, and yeah. then they were doing all these, you know, trying to plug in a click the yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Apple's literally fallen into the trap of that commercial, and that's what they've done with the iPad Pro is put it in that in that frame of that commercial. Now Microsoft could have introduced USB C and Thunderbolt three. I am disappointed they didn't put those things out there, but. I, I think they haven't changed much with because it's selling well and they're selling to businesses very, very well. So you want to be careful about changing a design and aesthetic too much when you're in that space, because if you do, you're going to hear a lot of you're going to get you might get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, feedback and a lot of backlash from that. I mean, look at Lenovo when they tried to change the ThinkPad. I think oh, they, yeah, that, that is true, though. Remember when they tried to change the X1 Carbon and add that, that touch strip on top of it. Do you know how many people people complained about that? I mean, yeah, that's because they took away the function buttons, which were useful. Yeah. And they added a strip. Yeah, which that's was the wrong that audience. Stupid. The think the ThinkPad audience is not who you were impressed with. They didn't, flashy they, didn't control control bar stuff. they didn't take away the function buttons. You could still get to the functions that were. No, 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 no. They took away the function buttons. They were still there. They were still there for you to be able oh, to use You just it. had to use a, a strip to access the buttons that you can yeah. push in the first place. Well, uh, you know, but, 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 but even then, most laptops were already putting the function buttons in the position where you had to, you had to hit a function. Yeah, you had to hit a function key to use it. Yeah. Anyway, so it made sense to like, oh, let's do this. And now they can just hit one button and they can just kind of go up there and, and do what they want to do with it. But you saw what happened when they tried yeah. to do that. I, mean, I was one of the people who were pissed at that one. I I would say that I was Apple didn't get away with the total touch bar thing, but for Soul, I think like they they got like, they got backlash from that as well too. <laughs> Do you hear them talk about that thing anymore? <laughs> they don't. It just it, it's I, there, but they just they, skip it. it. They skip it. It that like that that's that when you're dealing with things such as as, as a hardware device that's selling into not just consumers but also selling heavily into business and heavily. I mean, they're buying maybe. You know, a small business might buy fifty to hundred a year. Then you have some of these bigger enterprises that are buying ten thousand of your product. You you got to be kind of careful when you're changing those things and swapping those things out and making different design changes. So I understand in some ways why Microsoft is is kind of in the position that they're in. I do think, however, that if they are making you know a new Surface next year, we do need to see a um, Thunderbolt, a USB C, some type of port on there. Um, oh, if he doesn't have, if if he doesn't, I mean, it's never just he doesn't have Thunderbolt. The funny thing is, the Surface Go, yeah, has USB C. Yeah, it has he USB C. Upgrade to USB C. Yeah. So they need to have USB C. And the other, well, the other trick with that is, is that if they add USB C, people are going to expect them to be able to charge and also use that as well too. And Microsoft has had this one set of charger for so long that people mm -hmm. stock up, this is stock up on these things because people lose them, trust The me. Surface Go has both ports in it. And nobody I'm buys just, the Surface I, Go. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not, it's, 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 not the, it's not the buying part. It's the fact that they could do it. So for me, I, it's I not, don't think they want to include both because that's an added cost. I don't think they yeah. should include both. I think they want to get rid of one of them. Yeah. No, I, all, all I'm saying that's is that if, they, if they've done it, it means you, you now have the option to do either or. So yeah. don't do none. My problem is this, is that 
they with the surface go they told us oh we're accepting usb type c right and then when it came to the surface laptop 2 and the uh surface 6 they went uh, no, we're not even doing any. We're not either going to put both or take one away. We're just going to just leave it the same. That's the problem. That's where the big problem is. I, but I, <coughs> I call it a big problem. I call it that they got. It. They have to be careful with the way they change that. See, they could do that on the Surface Go because that also has lower spec hardware, lower. Cost no, but you you could do you could do it throw both on there. They not, the mark. You could actually the throw both on there. if you're thinking of businesses, right? You can throw both on there. It will still work with the same dock. It's just that there will be nothing going into that port there yeah. for the USB Type C. So if you're really thinking about businesses, then you add you add it. You don't remove, and then the That's business awful. will go. We'll go, oh, okay, cool. We need an extra port. They still want to make money off of it, and there's still the cost of having to have that on there and so continue to support that on there. Well, oh, next cool. year, they, ha they have to. They have to put USB Type-C, so. I mean, yeah, they have to, but I, I, I really think they not only they have to, but they got to cut that 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 proprietary charger out. So they got to prepare, <laughs> prepare people that have been using that yeah, for a long it, time. to prepare, yeah. you could have easily added one in there now this year, and then people will know that next year. Oh, this is great. Samsung with a Galaxy Book 2 powered by Snapdragon 850. It's got two USB Type-C ports. You can charge with either one. You can transfer either one. I was like, this is just a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> it's a shame that Microsoft can't do this. Come on. Yeah. Well, look, just I think getting back to the, um, the iPad Pro, Seriously, the more I look at this, the more I'm a little perplexed. Like, really, this thing doesn't really have a lot of the functionality I've come to expect from my Surface, really. Just from the, the, bag, the, the, yeah, from, from the pen. Just you start off with the pen, right? You start out with the pen. What, where are the buttons on the pen that I can use for, you know, right or left click when I want to select something? Or maybe a there, there, there is one button right now. You can you know you can switch between eraser and pencil. There is a button on there, so at least yeah, it's, but it's, it's going to be remappable for whatever. Yeah, but is it a does it would it open shortcuts? <laughs> this is the iPad, man. I'm talking about shortcuts, man. What's your problem? Well, that's part of the thing <laughs> you want to think about because right now on my Surface, I double click that end button and it opens up one notes, and I can start writing. Why are you thinking like a PC, why are you thinking like a PC user, man? Come on. And, and then you, you look at the you look at the the, the, the keyboard. It doesn't even have a trackpad, so I actually have to have a physical mouse. As bad as or as small as I think the keyboard. Well, there isn't really a mouse in in the iOS interface like that. You're yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> you're doing that. You're, your mouse <laughs> is built in. Well, it's the yeah, same it thing in the Surface. My mouse is built in, but it's very different to be able to basically type while you're typing a, a document, then go on your screen and then re uh, and then reposition the, oh, the yeah, no, that, and keep no, typing. That's, 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 it's oh, big, that's big, 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 um, flow. So it's, oh, there are few things here like, uh, did Apple really think this stuff out for people who actually um, no, it, it's not activity a, or it, um, it's not a matter of thinking. I mean, like literally, they're getting beat up by the surface in this in this in this sort of tablet space. So that's why this exists. No, no, and, and I think that's what I'm trying to point out. It's very reactionary. Oh it's yeah, not really that's well what I'm saying before they fell into that commercial that Apple, yeah. that Microsoft was doing. They, yeah, they right. fell into it. And yeah, it's it's one of those things where it was it was actually really fun watching uh, Matthew Moniz's video because he literally was plugging stuff, you know, especially live where fans are going, but he's supposed to work with it. And he's like, nope, unless you have an app. Like everything with iOS also is there must be an app associated yeah. to using anything for access, external access. So uh, what I use a microphone. It's not. It's going to show up. You must open a music app that will actually work with it, or especially hard drives. So if you're working with multiple device, you know, like you were talking about, Juan, working with multiple devices to record, file getting all is still oh. a pain, yeah. yeah. And then the and then he showed some of the file system, which I haven't seen in iOS in a while. Is it's a hot mess. It's mm -hmm. a hot mess to just manage files, yeah. which is one of the biggest things, dude. Uh, on um, on regular um, on, on on their desktop in the um, OS X. It's crazy. It's yeah. always been crazy to manage oh, yeah. files and folders and apps. It sucks. And it's always sucked. They, they, they love to make excuses like it's supposed to be easy. No, your, your finder sucks. It's the poor man's version of File Explorer. It sucks. You know it sucks. And you had to think different to use it. As embarrassed as I am <laughs> saying this, I have never downloaded anything on an Apple on an Apple desktop that I've been able to immediately find where it downloaded to.
to this day, I have not been able to do it. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but that's how weird it is when I use an Apple product. But like, I don't even know where it downloaded to. Wow. That's not surprising. It just <laughs> works. It just works. It just, it just installs itself and shows up. And you're supposed to just kind of magically know where to go. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I think it's just a matter of fact that, um, you know, Apple, like you said, is being reactionary and they fall into that mold and we'll see how they take it. Um, I think what is getting a lot of people, because I had this argument with, with Danny and I said, look, yeah, the processor is fast in there. I said, you know, and he was talking like, you know, they should move this. This should be in an iMac. And I was like, mm -hmm. I get it. I get, I get, no, I get the idea. I really do get the idea because that's probably what they're thinking too, is that we need to get that iPad to feel like, a, a, not iMac, sorry, uh, a MacBook Air, to feel like a MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. The problem is you, you can't run x86 software. And even what uh, Adobe has done with Premiere, uh, not Premiere, uh, Photoshop, Adobe stated they had to rewrite the whole thing out, right? Um, so it's not, it's really not the same software port. Plus, you know, there's only so much that um, mobile hardware can do. And I think Qualcomm's processor has shown us what they can do. Then again, Windows itself had to change a lot of kernel just to meet that ARM um, uh, sensibilities, if you will. But I see Warren Day is holding his thoughts. So it's about to leash the dogs. Go. A mobile processor is not the same damn thing as a desktop processor. <laughs> if you call yourself a tech pun and you and you and you sit there and say that, I don't respect your tech knowledge. Come on. You should know better than this. This is that's basic one-on-one. -on -one. And I kept hearing that. You should put this processor inside of a Mac. Really? Really? Go benchmark that against an Intel, like God, bench it, benchmark it against a Core i5. Shit, benchmark against a Core i3. See what happens. See what happens in those benchmarks. Two different, two different sets. Or, of it's, it's got seven it's GPUs trying, though. No, I was gonna say try and do two things at the same time. <laughs> Again, I'm perfectly willing to concede that whatever monster workstation I build will probably lose in some single, single application yeah. Yeah. type of type of uh, 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 benchmark comparison. But what I am hoping to achieve is. Not only will I not suffer much performance loss while doing that one thing, I could still have four other things going on and and have those running at optimal conditions with this type of hardware and this type of support. That's where I do agree with Danny. Like we I, we said this months ago, I really hoped that they would revive the MacBook name by giving us a an iPad clamshell. You know, kind of like what Microsoft tried to do with the Surface and the Surface Book and the Surface Laptop. You know, you have those yeah. different varying yeah. things. You could do the first, the tip of the spear, the first generation, um, the 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 way to transition, because we know so much more money is coming into Apple from iOS than from Mac OS. So much more money. And this is why they're pushing consumers to think that the iPad could be a true laptop replacement. But why do you have to punish your consumers like that? Build an iPad with a hinge and a proper keyboard and touchpad and pencil support, and you still have the touchscreen. You can make it like a Lenovo. You can claim you invented the flippable, foldable laptop. Fine. But that is actually a better <laughs> solution for consumers than what they're trying to sell them right now. There's so many people out there that still need a proper laptop clamshell form factor. Yeah, I, I think one of the things I, I, was, I was telling you, I was like, look, I get that, but here's the thing. Apple's best, one of the best editing softwares, at least in terms of speed, is Final Cut. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. So, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is MacBook Pro, video editing, multitasking, bam, you've got it yeah. all. MacBook, go fight Surface Go, go fight Chromebook and Chrome OS. MacBook, not MacBook Pro, MacBook running iOS crazy great battery life you already have everything in place for always connected lte designs you you could include a significant significantly larger battery you just add a little bit of support for something like a human interface driver which is hilarious that the ipad does not support proper hid but then you just push everyone over to the premium version of what a chromebook should be you don't want one of those 300 dollars acers 
right? You want something that can really, that's really nice and it's really well built and oh, it's got the Apple logo on it and it looks just like a MacBook Air. So you're not gonna be sort of laughed out of the coffee shop when you're writing your screenplay. There, there was such a huge opportunity there for them to not punish their consumers there, but we've already shown, we've already seen, Apple's gonna make way more money selling you the screen and then selling you the attachment to click on your keyboard and then selling you the pencil so that you can find point control on the screen. You don't wanna use a mouse, <laughs> that would be silly. So now when we get a new pencil, you'll have to buy the new pencil and oh, the yeah. new tablet that supports the new pencil. You can't use the old tablet with the new pencil and you can't use the, the new tablet with the old pencil because it just works. So this this is again, Apple is, is extracting as much wealth by breaking the basics. When they could have delivered the refresh to the MacBook name, and they could have de delineated. Oh no, I'm sorry, not even MacBook, iMac, iBook. So you have Mac with Mac OS, iBook with iOS. That's what it was. Now I remember what it was that we were talking about. <laughs> yes, we bring back that. the iBook. Bring back the iBook with iOS, MacBook and MacBook Pro with Mac OS, and that that's the perfect way to split. The audience is right there. I've got the best answer for you from pop culture fate 29. He says, simply buy Wayne tech. That's all you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, the, I, I definitely hear you with that. I, I totally forgot the fact that, um, yeah, with the surface, you can use the surface pen from, I think at least from the surface two all the way up, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. yeah. you just can't, well, can you use, can you use the new ones now too? Right. You can, right. As far as I know, I mean, yeah. because the thing is, like, if you as long as you built it on a proper standard, you can use any note any, stylus yeah. with yeah. any Samsung because it's just a proper HID supported um, Wacom digitizer oh. stylus. It, 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 we're not again. Th this is what's so frustrating is Apple has been shown that their consumer base will follow them down these types of experiments. And now they're turning up the heat because I kind of feel we're all in that place. You know, the, the state of mobile is starting to plateau. So this is the right time to turn up the heat on trying to extract as much money out of your locked in consumer base as you can before the market gets disrupted. And when I see something like the Apple Pencil is not built on compatible standards to move you back and forth. And the new Apple Pencil doesn't even come with a replacement tip in the box. You have to go and buy the four pack for $20 if you want to replace the tip on your super expensive stylus. Oh, really? Like, that nickel and dime BS is, is exactly the type of move that I see Apple engaging in because that's how they're padding their profit margins when, to me, that's that's kind of consumer hostile. That that that's That's now insulting to people that are really investing in your ecosystem. It doesn't affect me because I'm not invested in Apple's ecosystem, but I'm looking at my family, I'm looking at my friends, I'm looking at the people that took Apple at their word, and now they're having to pay more and more and more and more. What was the stat? Is something like every single Apple product this year took a 15 to 20% bump? Like every Apple product that sold this year that got a refresh is now 20% more expensive than the product it replaced. And and I doubt anyone can make the, the good faith argument that those products are really 20% better to your lifestyle, 20% better to your workflow. It's all about that cash, baby. Getting that money, getting those, getting everything they can milk out of it. I'm I'm still waiting for them to the, the next the next package of stuff to remove the headphones that they include with it. So all you get literally is the iPhone or it is just that device. And you want anything, well, you gotta buy out, you gotta buy outside of it. Considering considering my uh my uh crusade on consumer audio stuff. I, I really wish that they hadn't included the earbuds and that they had just kept stuck with the headphone adapter because then you could use whatever headphones you wanted without an additional fee and you wouldn't be subject to using headphones that don't work with any other Mac product that are also likely to encourage hearing damaging listening habits. So you get to subsidize Apple's cheapness with your own health um, and you know, you'll just foot the bill for when you need, you know, hearing aids sooner than you might have otherwise. Well, they'll supply those too. Here, Apple hearing aids. <laughs> you those. can, you can, you can apparently use the AirPods. You can like just shove your mic, your phone mic, into someone's mouth, and then the mic on your phone will will boost the signal to your AirPods. And nothing could go wrong with that. Oof. Yeah, and on that note of Apple Ness, um, we are ending the show right now. So we've come to the part of the show where we 
find out what everyone has on their channels currently oh, now. Can we do a quick update on the story we had last week? <clears throat> And according to Sam, <laughs> we need to hold that thought and do an update from the story. No, no, I just wanted to give a quick update because um, yeah. a, a lot of times it's very difficult to see what happens after people work out, walk out on a job, after people basically. Oh, Google's, uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. Google has come out. Actually, that's a good point, Sam. Yeah, Google, Google has come out with a few um, changes to its, um, I guess, arbitration rules um, when it comes to basically you know, settling these cases uh, related to this, uh, sexual harassment and whatnot, they've now stopped the requirements for private arbit arbitration. And off of this, we're also seeing places like Facebook stop the requirement also for um, forced arbitration. So this is a, a, a net good um, at the end of the day, because now people can actually go and get lawyers and go to court and actually sue these companies. And these people who are perpetrating this kind of activity do not uh, cannot uh, can no longer hide behind these private arbitration agreements. So I think that's a huge win, and just to see it turn around so quickly, it just shows that when people speak up, even if it's not every single one in the city or whatever, just you standing up with your coworkers and saying, "Hey, we want better terms, we want better treatments," it actually has an effect. Yeah, um, it's definitely. I, I I applaud I applaud all the people who stood up and. Um, you know, protested at different uh, locations, the offices at Google. I think it was about, I could be wrong, 20,000, 30,000, right, employees, something like that, yeah. uh, which is a sizable chunk for the organization. So mm -hmm. yeah. it, it got them to say, okay, look, we can't do this. Like, you know, it's just something we need to fix. So that's, that's a very good thing. Um, yeah. Um, True story. Yeah, and Ad Adida Nil also says, uh, "Whoa, I just realized I'm really angry at Apple. This podcast is therapy." <laughs> <laughs> if you want to watch, what's his name? The guy that does repairs, he, he's real Apple therapy. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's on one man to take them down. Like he, he does not care. <laughs> oh, and if you guys are looking for a really cool tech um, this week. Uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation came out with a very interesting product or a very interesting technology, which is kind of mm, whatever. It's kind of like joking, haha, whatever, but it is a self-contained toilet that you don't have to hook up to the water systems. And this is for places where the, your water systems or your piping isn't being fully developed or for third world countries that don't have the same kind of sewage systems that we, that we do. It basically enables people to process waste right at the level of the toilet. So if you guys want to check that out, that's the, I guess it's called the, uh, oh man, I'm looking for the name here. Uh, just, just research Bill and Melinda Gate new toilet. You guys will find it. It's actually a prequel stuff. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for that addition, Sam. Now we kick it off to our regular programming of finding out what we have on the channel, what we can expect next week. We start off with Juan Bagnell so that Warren can have some time. Matt. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to completely finish off my V40 camera review. The script is done, but um, I'm, uh, I've been really, really sick. And uh, my face is just starting to kind of heal back up from another psoriasis flare up. So that will hopefully be done um, early next week. I've got some OnePlus 6T videos coming out, just addendums to the audio performance and the uh, the camera performance. Some of the changes that we've seen with, uh, with OnePlus between the 6 and the 6T. I've got a, a video coming out probably tonight, um, just talking about some of my experiences with iPhone 10s cases. So uh, there's going to be a lot coming down the pipe. I have to throw that other shout out there. Um, uh, oh, uh, yesterday we did another Geek Book Club talking about a Star Wars uh, expanded universe novel, the introduction of Admiral Thrawn. So you can catch that on my personal channel too, uh, Geek Book Club. And then um, I just want to put it out there. I work for Newegg. I host one of their shows. It's a very retail-y show. So Please feel free to take this with a grain of salt. But over this month of November, and whether or not you shop with Newegg or you shop through some other retailer, if you're into the tech space and you're looking at your gadgets, your electronics, I would highly recommend. I'm going to reiterate what we talked about at the top of the show. I'm going to highly recommend that you look at your budget and you see what it is that you might have shopped later in the year or early next year, because I do feel we are going to see a consumer pinch on uh, those tariffs coming the beginning of the year. So we're gonna have a bunch of sales on stuff at Newegg for Black Friday. You know we're gonna do that. 
Um, but regardless of where you're doing or where you're shopping or what you're trying to buy, start budgeting now because stuff is st probably going to start getting more expensive next year. All right, cool. Thank you. Uh, Warren. Uh, so hopefully next week coming up, I'll finally have my uh, Pixel uh, sort of review, Pixel 3XL review sort of thrown out there for everybody to kind of see and check out and give you my thoughts on that. Um, I'm hoping to also get some, well, maybe some information on this new TV that I have sitting here on the side. It's uh, the Samsung, but I always forget the name. QNF. Q9F, there we Q9F, go. Q9F, sorry. Yeah, because I know I, I, they, I, I mix up the model name all the time, but the Q9F so far, it's looking pretty good on there. Um, but that's a couple of things that I'm planning to hopefully have out next week. Cool. Wonderful. Um, I was caught unawares there. I thought it was <laughs> longer. Yeah. Um, on my end, uh, just three videos this week, we had a should I buy segment uh, on the Pixel 3 XL, uh, a device that, of course, a lot of people are excited to see. It's got that awesome set of cameras. But the question is, should you actually buy it? Now, whether it's a good device or not. So definitely check that video. It's a new series we've started with a few devices, and we'll have a few more coming up as well. Um, I think it's important because sometimes you look at reviews and a device may be reviewed well, but doesn't mean you should actually buy it. Um, so that's that. Uh, we also have a video explaining Samsung's Infinity Flex display, which is their affordable display, um, just covering the announcements. So if you want to get some more information about that, um, what else they announced there, definitely go check that out. Uh, we have a video on the Galaxy Book 2. It's titled The Future Laptop, and some people may not agree with me or may agree with me, and I, I don't necessarily say that it is the future laptop. There are question marks at the end. But there's a lot of technology in this device that at least begs you to think about where you want your laptops to be in the future. So uh, I think it's worth checking out, so definitely go ahead and see that. Um, in terms of next week, uh, I think I'll be putting up my 30-day review, actually more than 30 days, on the iPhone XS Max. Uh, also, we're doing a 90-day on the Galaxy Note. Um, we're going to have at least one gift guide up next week, uh, sometime next week. Um, and I have another Should I Buy segment for smartwatches. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I might infuse some of Sam's thoughts in there. And if you know what his thoughts are on smartwatches, <laughs> you know where, where some of the segment goes. But... But it's also going to be a mixture of what we all consider smartwatches. So stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, I didn't mention this earlier, but we are going to do a giveaway. Yeah, I know, right? It's the holiday season. It's nice and cold. Actually, not nice, but it's cold. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's time to you know give us some stuff. I've got something here. I've got a gaming headset. This is the... Oops, sorry. Here we go. This is the Astro A10. Um, this is a really solid gaming headset. And I figured somebody here is going to win. Um, um, I just want to pick the winner. So while we're picking the winners, Warren's going to sing a song just to keep you entertained. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, both Sam and, and Juan, could you leave your thoughts in the group chat so we can... You know, I know I sprung this last minute. I apologize. So, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so while you guys are doing that, I can say the qualities of this headset. Oh, no, besides the headset, you see my shirt. Look at Ant Man right here. It's coming out of my pocket. Wow. Did you see uh, that? On my screen, it's actually yeah. blocked by um, the little square boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, li I like Warren's pick too, but um, I don't know if. Yeah, I think I think we will go with. Uh, I think we have a. Ooh, ooh, so so basically, this is the inside. There, there are three different candidates for the winner right now. So, so I, I mean, want I want you to know I did my my random mouse scroll wheel thing. <laughs> same with same same with me. Um, oh. I, I, I did my my random someone who likes the same thing I do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just looked at the screen and the first thing that popped up. Oh, or did you even read the comments of any one of these people that you guys selected? 
Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did. The, the, the one, the one that I picked, I landed on a comment about camera tech. So I've, you know, that that was like right up my alley. Oh. Yeah. And the person I picked likes the same device that I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, so, so I mean, we're down. Are we down to those two then? Is it is it between Sam? Yeah, and yeah. Do you want to flip yeah. a coin? Yeah, let's flip a coin. Let me. Oh, I don't have a coin here. I've got a quarter right here. I can flip. I can flip a quarter. All right, you flip it, and then just let me know who who's one. Sorry for this exciting. Well, no, no, no. Someone needs to write who's 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 who. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, no, wait, do we want Sam to call it in the air? Yeah, Sam, you call. Okay, go for just, it. Just pick your heads and your tails. Go One, ahead. One, two, three. Tails. And it's tails. All right, so who's, just, just type in your tails there so I know who it is. So no, Sam, Sam, Sam's pick. Yeah, so, oh, Sam, your pick. Okay, so um, so the winner is NMAC. Congratulations. You've won the Astro A10 headset. I'm sorry it took so long to pick you as the winner. Because we are super <laughs> indecisive here. Yeah. Uh, I just, just want to say, sorry, Fluxy. I really tried to pull that for you. <laughs> for you. My coin flipping skills weren't manipulative uh, enough. Yeah. Sorry. I so just have to support my Note 9 brothers and sisters <laughs> out there. I see. So, so Ed Mac, um, if you can send me a private message here on YouTube, go ahead. Uh, if you, which most likely is not the case, uh, <laughs> just leave your Twitter handle. And I'll contact you directly on Twitter. So just let me know what your Twitter handle is, and I'll and I'll reach out to you right now. And uh, yeah, congratulations! You get the A10 headset. So hopefully that helps you in the holidays with all the awesome games that are out there right now. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching the show. Um, it's been fun. And definitely check out all the channels. You can check out Mr. Warren Bowman at bw1.com. Uh, it's uh, website is bw1.com. All his social channels are bw1.com. Check out his content there. And also, you can follow Mr. Juan Carlos Bagnell at Some Gadget Guy. He's got a website. He also is Some Gadget Guy on all the social handles that merit anything, including IGTV, where we're waiting for his second video. Uh, and, uh, don't hold your breath. <laughs> and also, he hosts a show on Newegg on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. So you can check him out there. And Sam is black iron underscore man. You can find him on Twitter and on Instagram. Follow him on that handle. Myself, it is bored at work. And Mac, I am waiting because once I end this, I cannot view your uh, Twitter handle. So please submit your Twitter handle before we end because it's going to be in 30 seconds. He's desperately trying to create a new account on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike's like, no, I'm creating an account now. <laughs> or, yeah, or, or uh, you know what, just just hit me up on Twitter. Don't, ha don't know my Twitter handle. You don't know your Twitter handle. <laughs> See, Fluxy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what? This is this this is perfect because that's Damn. exactly the kind of stuff I would say. Like, uh, what's my Twitter handle again? <laughs> and Mike, okay, um, are you on Instagram? <laughs> if you're on Instagram, let me know. This is hilarious. <laughs> awesome, man. It's like we're trying to give you something. Well, like... In the meantime, I'll be trying to grow up my beard for over the next few weeks. Oh, um, you guys oh. get to you guys get to follow me on my oh, my third time. Attempt at growing a beard over the last three years. <laughs> this is going to be as bad as the East attempt. <laughs> yeah, my, my attempt was terrible. <laughs> oh man, this this is this is uh this is harsh. Me trying to grow a beard. I am I am actually going to uh, grow back a fro if possible. Uh, I've done that many times in the past. Um, so yeah, and Mac says he doesn't have Instagram. And Mac, what's going on, bro? Man, the guy just like find the YouTube. Huh? <laughs> How did you find this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I'm not gonna blame someone. Okay, this, this, can we can we just see how useless this is? So I, I go to MMAX page here on YouTube yeah. and doesn't that give me an option to send him a message. Yeah, it's been a it's been a problem with YouTube. Um doing stuff like that. Uh, oh my god. This the people who don't really use and you see this this is this is why Google is like really weird, man. They could have made Google Plus into something that was actually useful. 
Now this is what has to happen for people to get information. <laughs> to get information to someone who's using your platform. So just communicate with them. Is yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, this is a- uh, okay, and Mark, just go to our contact page and send me an email now, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? It, it, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's because you you know you seem to value your privacy and it's okay. You don't have to take the prize if you don't want it, but you can always reach out to E via email if you go to the site page um, or you could just... He, can he send you a private message on here? Oh, he can't. We just talked about Yeah, that. I mean, yeah, I, I'm trying to find a way to send him a message. Do you have a, you have a contact page? Here? I would No, there's a contact page on, um, just email me at contact at board at work. That's my, that's the contact email. So I'm to um, look now. Yeah. So, I'm so glad we're, we're still, we're still doing all of this live. I know, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're troubleshooting. We have to. What, uh, and Mark, what is that handle? Is that a, Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> how how much you want to bet there's the one at the end? Because then you need to make Oh wait, no, and one. Mac, uh and Mac, is that correct? Because I can't find you here. I just I just <laughs> I just copy pasted. Oh I did. I found it. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Um I, and Mac, I, I have to follow you and you have to accept so I can send you a message. <laughs> This is private. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm just, I just, you know, I'm trying to make this work. Here. This is, this is my favorite timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I'm, I'm quite, quite sure they didn't expect to be the center of attention at the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Especially with, oh no, and Mac with tweets protected. I, we're, we're really not trying to call you out. So, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not, but. But just I just <laughs> followed you, so add me, and then I can we can exchange I can exchange your information and send you the prize. So awesome. yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed the the end of the show as much as the whole show. Uh, <laughs> I certainly and, did. Right. And uh, yeah, join us next week. That was an adventure at three p.m. And uh, always enjoy your entertainment. Yeah, Bam. and this is proof that this is really random.